Third eye is not a, a physical thing. You can't roll your eyeballs inward and see what's within you, dimensions which cannot be expressed logically. From the lowest point of Muladhara to Agna, there are many ways of reaching there. But from Agna to Sahasra, there is no way, it's a pathless path. So, what is referred to as the third eye is, we always said Shiva will open his third eye and he can burn up the whole existence if he wants. You need to understand, this is a dialectical culture. You don't take these things literally, logically. You need to always read behind it. Unfortunately, people start interpreting it as a logical thing and its whole thing is so badly distorted dimensions which cannot be expressed logically are always packed up in these kinds of stories so that they are preserved without distortion. <laughs> so Shiva opens his third eye and either everything burns up or he sees everything clearly. So third eye is not a, a physical thing. It is just that if your energies reach a certain peak within you, you have a new clarity of vision of life. You see everything from a completely different dimension. So you start seeing things, it's an inner eye we say, we can say you can turn it inward or outward, whichever way you turn it. So these eyes are only outward, you can't roll your eyeballs inward and see what's within you, isn't it? So third eye is both ways, if you want you can turn it inward or you can turn it outward. Whichever way you are seeing life beyond the normal limitations of your perception. Your perception has risen beyond the physical, that is the third eye. Why is it connected to a particular spot in your body? Among the seven chakras, the sixth dimension is called as Agna. Agna is located slightly above the, where the eyebrows meet. There are three dimensions attached to it. These three dimensions are traditionally named after Shiva, three different forms of Shiva. But these three are actual experiential points in the body, where if your energy moves to that point, your experience of life alters itself. The whole process of whatever spiritual process you're doing consciously or unconsciously is fundamentally to move to a higher plane of perception, isn't it? Yes? You call it God, you call it Kundalini, you call it yoga, you call it what you want. But fundamentally, the whole thing is to raise your perception from a limited physical perception to a higher possibility. So if your energies are in the lowest chakra, which is referred to as the Muladhara, food and sleep will be the most dominant factors of your life only food and sleep, you will not know anything else. If energies move into Swadhisthana, then you are a pleasure seeker, you enjoy the physical world in so many different ways. If your energies move into Manipuraka, then you are a doer in the world, you are an achiever. If your energies move into Anahata, you are a creative person, maybe you are an artist, you are a painter, you are something, you are you're more creative about life. If your energies move into Vishuddhi, if they become dominant there, you are a powerhouse. Power need not just mean this, human beings can be powerful in so many different ways. So, this is the power center. If energies move into your agna, then you have clarity of vision. Now, you are intellectually realized, not experientially realized, intellectually realized. You touch the point, where life cannot disturb you, life cannot take a toll on you because intellectually you're realized, but still you're not ecstatic in any way. You don't know the ecstasy of life, but you have stability of life. Nothing can touch you, nothing can disturb you, you come to that point. From the lowest point of Muladhara to Agna, there are many ways of reaching there.
There's so many paths, a million different paths of how to get there. But from Agna to Sahasrar, there is no way. It's a pathless path. This is the reason why a lot of people are talking only about peace, because they only got till here and they don't know what's beyond. So they're assuming and concluding that this is all there is, because there is no particular path or method to get beyond. There are no particular methods or there are no methods. When all methods are dropped, only then from Agna to Sahasrar one will reach. If your energy touch your Sahasrar, the topmost chakra, you will become ecstatic like for no reason, simply you're ecstatic. You don't need any external stimulus. You will see those of you who come to the Bhavaspandana, simply ecstatic. Nothing is happening. Nobody is telling you beautiful things, nor did you dinner lottery, nothing. Simply you are ecstatic, just blowing like that because your energies have hit the sahasrar. So from here to here there is no journey. So when you come here, if you can turn this third eye inward, only then you see that there is no way, the only way is to jump. To jump into total emptiness, Either you must be crazy <laughs> or you must have absolute trust in somebody else's word. There are only two ways you can jump into nothingness, isn't it? Either you must be crazy that you don't care what happens to you or you have so much trust in somebody, if he says jump, you will anyway jump. These are only two ways. So the third eye, is something that gives you a total clarity of how things are, how life processes. When I say life, don't think of life in terms of waking up in the morning, eating, going to the party, not that life. Fundamental life, life as you, life as an entity, life as a basis of existence right now. When once you have a clear vision of this, then the way you function, and the way you conduct your life is very, very different. So once your third eye opens, it is not that this is going to split and open up, your perception has risen beyond the physical. You have started seeing that which is beyond the physical. You know, have you heard about those schools and they have them blind so that they develop this ability to do remote viewing and… No, those schools are fundamentally trying to develop the intuitive nature of the mind. But I am not talking about the mind when I say the third eye. See, mind is capable of fantastic things by itself. You have not explored even a small percentage of the mind's capabilities. Human beings have not explored even a very small capabilities of the mind. What they are trying to do by closing off the eyes for a certain period is to develop an intuitive mind. See, for example, a person who is visually handicapped, his sense of the other four senses are very high, isn't it? Have you noticed this? Their capability is so uncanny about how they hear things, how they know things just by the direction of the sound is so uncanny. So that is about heightening a certain aspect of the mind so that they become intuitive. That's a different dimension. If even in India, people who want to train in astrology, people who want to train in predicting other people's lives and things, they shut their eyes off for long periods so that they learn to use their mind in a particular way. When I say third eye, we are not talking about the mind at all. It doesn't involve the normal process of the mind. It's a different dimension by itself. <laughs>